now is our part of My Bing Chengdu. Uh -huh. Yeah, this week we're joined by our good friend Matthew, who is in Pingle to go rock climbing. Pingle? Pingle. Pingle, Asian town? Uh -huh. What a pity, I've never been there before. You should go, it's good. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, the, the rock here is good, but it's, it's not really a beginner sort of climbing. Yeah, it's got these spikes sticking up on its back. It kind of hurts every time it wiggles. Welcome to Mapping Chengdu. According to statistics, at the beginning of the 20th century, there were more than 400 small towns surrounding Chengdu. Today, they have become popular tourist attractions. In Mapping Chengdu, Old Town series, we carefully selected 10 of the most interesting old towns to share with you. Here we go. When I think of Chengdu's old towns, the first thing that comes to my mind is Pingle. Since Pingle is only 80 kilometers away from downtown Chengdu, all you have to do is take the Chengwen Chong Expressway for one hour and you will have already arrived. Welcome to this week's episode of This is Chengdu. I'm your host Matthew Knowles and uh, I just let you know about me. I've been in China for about two and a half years. I'm from USA, uh, but I've already decided to stay in Chengdu and live here. Um, so I brought you today to the city of Pingle. And Pingle is uh, it, it's a pretty cool place. It's a place you can come and just relax. And uh, there's a river that runs beside the city. Uh, there's bamboo, there's shade. It's a place you can come and stay for a couple of days, stay for a couple of hours, but you're guaranteed to be relaxed by the time you leave here. So let's go check it out. Pingle really is an ancient town, dating back to the Qin Han period more than 2,000 years ago. It is the first post station of the Southern Silk Road to the West. Even today, historians in Pingla are still researching the history of this important post station. So as you're strolling along the river here in, in Pingla, there is a, there's a stream beside the river with various bridges that are made to imitate uh, some of the famous bridge designs in China. Pretty cool. Everything in Pingla has a rich history. The trees, the bridges, the houses, and the people. Uh, so because of the atmosphere here in Pingla, a lot of the Chengdu residents come here to take pictures for their, for their wedding albums or for any other occasion. The Baimo River has been flowing quietly for many years. Along the river are over 30 square kilometers of bamboo forest. It's very peaceful here and uh, under the shade of the bamboo trees is also very cool. It's a good place to relax and just uh, soak in the atmosphere of Pingle. In the old times, most of the residents of Pingle made a living making paper from the abundant local bamboo. But nowadays, the river has become a tourist attraction. I'm, I'm glad they warned me about the, the low, low bridge. I would never have known. So we're here beside the Baimo River, and here is a place where you can get in the water, play with your friends, squirt them with water guns, you know, have a good time, what everyone likes to do. In, in, in Sichuan Hua, we say, Tai Shui. Do we have a Tai Shui? Yes. We need to Tai Shui. Yes. 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 Like every old town developing tourism, there are a lot of things you can do in Pingle, like shopping, walking, enjoying a cup of tea, or even playing Mahjong. You can spend a week in here just to take in the fresh air and beauty of the scenery alone. Men and ladies both love the grass shoes. How about how can? 
So after our nice stroll beside the river here in Tingle Ancient Town, we've come to get some food. And I brought you to probably the most famous restaurant in town. You can tell by how many people eat here every day. Uh, the place is called Lingjiangxi, and I hear you can get the freshest fish in town here at this restaurant. So let's go check it out. <laughs> in Chengdu, there's lots of places you can get fish, but no place you can get fish this fresh because they keep the fish live right here in these little tanks. And these fish came maybe 50 meters from the river over there, placed in these tanks. So you're, you're basically getting the freshest fish possible. This basket and pick the fish out yourself. So if you want to eat this, you just pick it up and then give it to the boss. Whoa! I don't think this fish died yet. I'm going to tell one. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. So this, this is what we call tofu fish. And pretty self-explanatory. You have fish, and then you have tofu. China, there's an expression. <laughs> but what makes this destination different from the other old towns is one activity that, that can only be found in Pinglo. So I know living in Chengdu, it's hard to find a place where you can actually get out of the city, find some mountains like this, and do some rock climbing. But uh, apparently, we found a spot here, here in, in Pinglo. So let's go check it out, see how the rock climbing is. <laughs> If you haven't been training for rock climbing in a while, like me, you might not get to the top in the first try, but I have faith if you keep trying, we'll get up, we'll make it up there. When I was climbing, I saw that there was a figure of Buddha carved into the rock. What's that all about? By developing tourism in Pingle, now the people do not only depend on the river or the bamboo to make a living. Most residents here have opened their own businesses to meet the needs of tourists. Although Pingle has changed a lot in order to cater to the growing tourism industry, the feel of Pingle is still that of a quiet and peaceful old town. That's all for today's Mapping Chengdu. I'm your host, Matthew. See you next time. Alright, welcome, up, my friends. Uh -huh. And what kind of sports do you like? Um, I like swimming, uh, netball, and I like to run every now and again. How about baseball? I've never tried baseball. Really? I introduce a friend to you and our audience. Okay. Let's take a look. Take a look. Welcome to this edition of My Friends. Today is a little bit raining and now I'm in the sports field. Do you know what kind of sports he's playing here? Let's go and find out. Okay. Turn. Run to third base. Run to third base! Hey boy. Justin comes from America. Before coming to China, he taught baseball in university. Then he fly to China, which, as he's saying, is a country full of opportunities. Two years ago, he came to this city, started the first baseball school here in Chengdu with his friends. 
Yeah. Why do you choose to live here? That's the weather. That's the weather? You like the weather here? Yeah. You like raining? Well, if it's raining, you can still play baseball. <laughs> if it's warm enough, you can play all year round. So when did you start to learn how to play baseball? When you're a little child? Four years old. Four years old. So that's just the golden time for kids to learn how to play baseball. Um, I was a little younger than uh, the average oh. American boy. Why do you choose to be a baseball coach? I choose to be a baseball coach uh, because I can't be a professional player. <laughs> I think I'm staying a baseball coach because I want to spread baseball to the Chinese children. Um, I think that in this country it's a good opportunity for uh, Chinese families to come together and learn about the game. So which baseball team in MLB do you like best? Yankees? I have to say the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a New Yorker? Yeah, I was raised in New York. But the Red, Red Sox. Sox? Well, my best friend is a Red Sox fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if you watch the game together? Red Sox versus Yankees? We went to a Red Sox game versus Yankees in the Red Sox stadium. Um, to fight each other? Yeah. Oh, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool experience. So why baseball is so popular in America? It's, it's a good time to eat hot dogs. <laughs> popcorn. You can also eat hot dogs when you watch NBA. So what's the difference between basketball and football and the soccer and so on? Uh, actually, baseball is a deep history and it's a part of American history. Um, in terms of football, it's actually recent times and mm -hmm. recent history. What do you think is the future of Chinese baseball? Depends on how the people do it. If, if you have people to work together and put time into it, um, it's going to take a few years, maybe 10 years, to be pretty prevalent. And the MLB has worked a lot in China to put the game, um, especially in cities like Beijing and Guangzhou. Tianjin, Shanghai. So actually this is, it's a growing sport. Catcher! What's catcher do? Catch the Catch As a lucky person, Justin not only owned his business, but owned the house in this city also. His house is by the side of Chengdu East Railway Station. He said it's for travel convenience since he would like to be a baseball scout in the future, sure, which needs to travel around the country to explore the best baseball players in China. Now he's decorating his house, and in IKEA, he bought most of his furniture. I bought my house, and it was a Qing, Qing Shui Fang. So do you like the undecorated or uh, the one already decorated? We don't really build many new homes that are made of cement. Most of our homes are, have wood, made of wood inside, mm -hmm. and the basement is cement, you know. Uh, the, it, I think that it's good to have an undecorated home for your first home. A small piece, like from here to here. But I, the one I bought was too big. I didn't measure it, but I liked it. <laughs> and I thought maybe I could just cut it if there was a problem. And I, I thought my kitchen was a little bit bigger than what it was, but it was too long by about that much. So I'm still working on how to. Uh, install it. Both already bought a house mm. here. What does a home means to you? Mm. Um, Do you feel feeling mm. at home now? Um, actually, Chengdu is a place that's very far from my home and actually very far from Beijing. Um, I, I can say Chengdu has been good to me, especially my good friends here. Is a long stay here or you just want to stay here for several years and then you will go back to your country? Well, my heart is in baseball. My career is number one. Uh, so if there's baseball opportunity here, and that's what's going to support me in my future. So I, I believe uh, I will stay in Chengdu. 80% of Justin's house has done. Now he only needs to add some small furniture. Today, I accompanied him to pick a lamp for his house. Nice lamp. Very simple. Yeah, I think I'll buy this lamp. 
as Justin says, baseball is where his heart is. For those who have dreams, doing what they truly love as a career is perhaps the most happy thing to ever happen in their life. And having a house, maybe it's the second happiest thing. And for Justin, a delicious hot dog is the third one. You have a baseball game in America, you must buy hot dogs. First base! First base! I can't hear you! First base! Next edition of My Friends, we introduce you some French musicians. Do you want to feel the charm of French style pop music? See you next week. The vacation of the Dragon Ball Festival is from yesterday to tomorrow. So tomorrow is the last day of this vacation. Last day of holidays. Yeah, what's your plan? Um, Matthew and Justin have kind of inspired me to do some sports, so maybe I'll go and do something like that. Don't forget to take some zongs. No <laughs> more zongs. I've eaten enough for one year. Thank you. Uh, so next week, new friends, new uh -huh. places. Yeah. Right. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Je